Hi, I'm Amy Servini. I'm Hilary Gardner. And I'm Melissa Stilianu. And, and we are Duchess. When we started singing together, we discovered that humor, collaboration, and yes, imperfection were essential ingredients for our signature style of harmony. We're setting out to explore what harmony means to creative people from all walks of life and to learn how they find joy and success in their chosen field. Along the way, there's sure to be laughter, storytelling, and probably hijinks. That's just who we are. Welcome to Hi the winter guys. of our discontent. <laughs> <laughs> You might imagine that uh, two gals from north of the border, Canada, actually uh, north of the border, Alaska, tis mm-hmm. I, that, that we would be completely uh, comfortable with winter. And I suppose to a certain extent we are because, you know, we're hardy folk. Mm-hmm. But, um, but we've reached that point in the year when uh, we're ready for spring and spring isn't quite ready for us. And um, we thought we would share with you some of our our tips, our tricks, our salves, our solutions, our desperate alcohol-fueled attempts (laughs) to make it through winter with a minimum of the blues. Do you guys have the blues? I do. I have the blues. I wasn't sure why. So maybe it is winter's fault. I think it might be. Um, I don't know. Our listeners may or may not know. I don't know if I talked about it on the air, but I uh, swore off sugar back in the late fall for a good three months Big mistake. Well, <laughs> it turned, yeah, it turned, I, I'm back off the wagon. I fell off the wagon. Yeah, not that long ago. It's not your fault, ladies, although um, some of that sugar consumption has happened here at this table. Um, but it leaves me wondering if like, it was like, is it because I'm eating sugar again? Or is it because it's so gray outside? Mm. Or because, I mean, sugar and chocolate specifically are a, have always been a big way of how I deal yeah, with they're that the stuff. They're the solution, yeah. not the problem. <laughs> Always. Yeah. yeah. So I just don't know. I'm, I'm right. just keeping on eating chocolate. And, uh, you know, so blame it on the weather. Let's say that. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. I will take it. Because you know what it is? It's my doctor's fault. Oh, it's my doctor's good. fault. I went for a physical. I told her I was so proud to get on the scale. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been doing doing this thing. And and she was like, that's great. And she said, you know, it's okay to have a little bit dark chocolate now and again. And then, and that night was, was the night like, that that's I... That's fantastic. I, know, <laughs> like, I think I wrote to you guys. Yeah. I was like, guys, I feel really weird. I'm eating a piece of chocolate. Uh. I'm feeling like kind of high. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I, I really like my doctor, but I think that she, you know, it's all her fault. She unwittingly sent you down the path of no return. Mm-hmm. All right. Yep. Wow. You know what I, I did? What? About chocolate. What? I bought semi-sweet baker's like chunks that oh, you would yeah. use in chocolate chunk cookies. Because then I get a, a small bowl and it's full of these chocolate. Cho- like when I'm only getting one square of dark chocolate. It doesn't feel like enough. It's very joyless. I'm sorry. But that sucks. And that you might as well, like, I might as well eat a banana. We know how much I like bananas. But give me a little bowl that is full. And I am like a child. I'm so excited. I'm so easily fooled by those kinds of tricks. So that's what I do. Just. Yeah, that's a good tip. I have some small bowls at home. Yeah. So maybe I'll I'll do <laughs> Take that. Take it out. Yeah, I'll give it a try. I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> What do you do, Hillary? I feel like we're really just tipping our hand that like the Duchess answer to anything is just going (laughs) to be, because the answer that I have about beating the winter blues is I I can't really cop to having the blues so much this winter. I'm not like bummed out. I'm a great fan of cozy and of homebound kind of activities. But part of that reason is because I'm making food all the time. So it's still very much kitchen centric. I'm just doing, you know, cozy puttering around Cooking, Are you making your fennel? Your, your, um, I, 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 I can't have it because of the cheese, but it sounded so delicious when you rattan, talked about it. I haven't had that, but I did recently inexplicably have a craving for broccoli cheddar soup. Mm. Like it's not the kind, it, that's a pretty specific craving, but that. it just Yuck. seemed like the right oh, thing. Oh, you don't like it? No. Well, you, you, you can't really hang with the, the cheese. The cheese. Oh, yeah. And I love broccoli, but I've never liked broccoli soup. Mm. Never. Oh, this I is dig. Delightful, mm. and uh, it was really good. And it was really easy, and it just kind of—I I feel very smug knowing I have a big pot of soup waiting in the fridge. 
I just, uh, that I, is it, a very nice it, feeling. Not only is the soup delicious, but that feeling of smug superiority is also delicious knowing that you come home and you have food waiting because uh, you planned ahead and made it yourself. Like a pioneer woman. Just like, not like the pioneer woman. No, no. Whose recipes are good, but we made they one recently. Good. I can't remember what it was. She's it might like, have been for pancakes and it wasn't so you good. You start with 12 sticks of butter. <laughs> Bless. <laughs> Her recipes are good though. Yeah. They work. Yeah. I mean, she's no Ina Garten. No. Then again, who also loves is butter. Also a fan of butter. <laughs> Her brownies have oh my more, God. more butter than chocolate, I think. Oh, maybe. For real. That's just, why they're, they're so very, good. They're very, very good. Um, are you possessed by that pioneer woman spirit a little, maybe? I mean, probably genetically, like in a cellular level. I'm descended from like farm people and prairie women like for many generations. So there for sure is an element mm-hmm. of that. Like I, I don't feel secure at home unless like the pantry is stocked and there's something, you know, a braise that's waiting. I Yeah. So maybe that's part of it. But I mean, all that other, the wilderness shit, no. <laughs> you can keep that. There's no camping. I'm not going to milk a cow. Like, I know. But have you ever made happen. your own soap? No, I won't no. do that. No, I'm not crafty. <laughs> I'm, I'm cooky, kitcheny, puttery, but I'm not crafty. I'm like, it's why I don't understand camping. Like we, as human beings, with opposable thumbs and the power of rational thought have evolved to the point wherein we can pee inside and it's fine. <laughs> why am I going to willfully eschew all of these modern luxuries to go be cold and uncomfortable and pee in the woods? Amen. I've always said, if you ever find me like in a river needing, you know, shampoo, like standing in a river trying to get my dinner, like in need of a shampoo and in grubby clothes, something has befallen me. <laughs> something has gone terribly wrong. We are not recreating. This, is, this isn't a good way to beat the winter no, breeze, I, just I like ranting and I cannot and picture that. No. no. I've done it. I don't recommend it. You um, mean, what, which part? The fishing part? All of it. Fishing, camping, peeing outside. It's all a nightmare. So it's not bec- it's not because you're unfamiliar with it. You have done it oh, and decided not for me. Very much so. Yeah, I grew up in Alaska. I wonder if I can find it. There is a picture yes. of me, when, probably age like fourteen or fifteen, and I'm in the camper. Like we were camping on. We had a lot on the Kenai River in Alaska, and I'm in I'm in the camper and I'm reading. I think I was studying because I remember I had a highlighter in this picture. But I'm just looking at the camera just with daggers. Like I hate this moment with the fire of a thousand suns. And it's, that's my, that was me camping. <laughs> that is awesome. Please Wait. find that photo. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to find it. Well, we're from Ontario and there was some camping to be I had. I never went camping. Never went camping? No, but we had a cottage, so we didn't uh, need to camp. Right, you had a Toilet structure. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. I went fishing in a boat, like not in my waders, but mm-hmm. either off the dock or in a, you know, it's pretty chill though. Could do a worm. That's fine. What about at camp? Like at camp, did they make you do camping trips? No. Did you, did you didn't no, do I went camp. To like, you went to piano camp. I went to piano <laughs> camp no camping. and band camp and <laughs> volleyball camp was my big like exciting adventure. Yeah, no, you're in a cabin. There's oh, always amazing. like... Yeah, sometimes you have to like go to the bathroom in another cab. Like, right. A, in the, what right. do they call that? Did it they, wasn't an outhouse really like because it was... It many actual, stalls yeah. and showers. right. Right. I don't know what it's called. I forget what it was called. But yeah, I didn't do actual camping ever. I did once by mistake (gasps) because I was placed in the group, the age level above me by accident. And I had never gone camping before or canoeing or anything. And so I was paddling a canoe and we was a couple days trip. And um, Whoa, really? Yeah. This was Camp Pioneer. (laughs) No, but I did have a very... Did you become a wife on that trip? I'm really <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Sister wife. <laughs> now that I think about it, um, the, the most exciting thing that happened was that our, our canoe overturned. Oh, that's exciting. It mm-hmm. tipped. Mm. And, uh, and so we were just in this like shallow part of the, the river. It wasn't like very dangerous or anything, but there were two currents. And I remember that, you know, like my paddle went one way and the canoe went the other oh. way. And I was there and like I was under the shade of these big, you know, what do you call those things? Branches. 
of a wow. tree. I thought you were <laughs> looking for a specific like no. trees that had fallen down over. Oh, it was just like a like a tree on the shore, and like then it's low. old and like it has big branches. Mm-hmm. That, so I was under that, and then on this rock on the shore was this gigantic toad, or what do you is it bigger than a toad? Is there anything bigger than a toad? A bullfrog? Yeah, maybe a bullfrog. It was it was really really big. It was like the like the size of your head. Did you kiss him and find out he was a prince and got a new boyfriend and then you found no. twenty bucks? I, no, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> no, this yeah, the most yeah, this is so exciting story. No, I'm it's, super into this it's, story. No, it's just well the thing is that this was may have been the I'm as I'm realizing right now, it might have been the genesis of my desire to be on stage because we got back to, you know, we were rescued or whatever. And we finished our camping trip and went back to the, to Camp Pioneer. And I was the one chosen to like step up in front of everybody and tell this story about, you know, about the toad. And it was, it was a moment. I was, I don't know, 10 or, or something. That's young to be on a canoe camping. That's the thing. I'm a September baby. And I think they, I think they put me in with the 12 year olds. That's Mm. what it was. I was 11. And anyway, so now now that's you know thank you counselor sally or whatever you know for picking me out and i i got up there and i was really nervous to tell the story and i think i told it better than i did just now um perhaps um and uh yeah so there you go camping wow, wow. so we sort of div- digressed I from our, so. our winter blues <laughs> Maybe but it actually this kind of brings me to to my what I do. Go on. Oh. So first of all, I have to admit that when it first gets cold, mm. I am psyched. Yeah. There I remember a that. spring in my step. Mm-hmm. It invigorates me. I much prefer the cold yeah. to extreme heat. Extreme cold, I will take over extreme heat. Yes. Day. Me too. Um, I'm happier. And I like, there's something romantic to me about snow crunching underfoot. I mean, listen, it's Louise Penny's fault to a certain extent. She's an author and I've been reading these books and it makes me want to be in like a place where there's snow all the time. Anyway, but what I've been doing, I didn't think I had been doing anything, but I find that after my terrorist children go to sleep, (laughs) I am exhausted and I always have these great intentions of doing a night shift. That's what we call it in our house where we go back to work basically after the children are sleeping but we have not been doing that lately because we are so wiped out and I particularly have been rather grumpy. So we are watching comedy, just laughing. That is, has been the best, the best thing for me. And it makes me so happy. There was a joke about, uh, Jews and canoes and tipping. On, oh yeah, on comedians and cars with coffee. Oh, I've been recently. watching that too. Which episode was? That? I don't know. We've we've huh. almost gone through all oh, of the episodes at this so point because they're twenty minutes. That's awesome. Yeah. What? Yeah, well, that's not a commitment. Yeah, no, I can and make you can that. skip the first couple of minutes if you're not into cars. Oh, you have to watch that part. Really? really? You he skip pairs it? the car I with the comedian. It. I know, but the thing about how much engine that takes juice like it has. 20 seconds. Two okay. liters. That's all I hear. It doesn't matter. It's 20. But he says funny things sometimes slipped in there. You're right. You're right. Makes fun of the car sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I basically like to laugh in this. It's, you know, it's all not even really over yet. No. <sighs> There's a lot left. We have all, when when is it over? March twenty something officially, but it wasn't our thing. About but the, April is the cruelest month. Yeah, because you're walking down the street, the scent of hyacinth in the air. It's warm. It's balmy. You're ready to go. The next day, Bam! it's sleet and yeah. just horrifying. Except you're not ready for it because you just had the hyacinths and yeah. the warm weather. So you're wearing like your cute flats and a light jacket, and it just turns into a hellscape of just terrifying proportions. It's, yeah. it's a rough, it's a rough time. I remember, um, one year when I was in college on April 1st, I want to say, because yeah, that makes sense. Humongous snowstorm, like mm. shut the city down completely. I had a rehearsal that day. I was doing an off campus show. I was playing, of course, baritone saxophone, um, I see where this is going. tenor saxophone, <gasps> flute and clarinet. So already this gig sucks. I mean, it was actually really fun, but to get to, it was off campus. I had to take the tea. I had to do all kinds of things. The tea? Oh, sorry. That's like the subway. Okay. It's not really. It's like a streetcar more than a subway. It's a lot of overground. No, it does. Well, sure. We'll go with it. Yeah. Yeah. The green line. Yeah. Uh, And so I, with tiny, 
human with as I probably had as much on my back as I weighed in the snow because they didn't cancel oh my God. <laughs> because it's Boston. I mean, right. I feel like they're used to this, but it was April. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, we got slammed with this snowstorm. I I can't believe I made it to I that rehearsal. I wonder what year that was. I want to say ninety eight. Oh, okay. So because I moved to New York, I'm I'm closing rapidly in on my fifteen year mark in New York City. I moved mm. to New York on March thirty first, two thousand three, when I was eight. And <laughs> <laughs> but. I chose that time to move to New York because I thought that's like the perfect, it's going to be becoming spring. It'll be like a great, a great time period to integrate myself into the life of the city. It yeah. can be out walking around, blah, blah, blah. There was a freaking blizzard in early April and it, it was, was exactly that. that. It was just, you know, sloshing through the grayish brown sludgy snow. I mean, it was a true snowstorm mm. and it was definitely uh a blow, <laughs> a blow, <laughs> a blow to the psyche. Like New York's no. just going to be amazing. And it was amazing how many things <laughs> were so difficult. Yes. Yeah. When I first moved here in 2005, I was, I didn't have that many places to be at any specific time because I just moved here and I was, you know, I was studying a bit and, and whatever and living in our, our, uh, really kind of sketchy apartment. Um, but I'd get on the subway or, or get on the platform and be waiting for the, what was I waiting for? The R or something and sit down on the bench and read my Kerouac or whatever I brought with me. And like 40 minutes would go by and I'd be, I wouldn't see the train and I didn't know to look for signs. And it took me, a, you guys are not going to be surprised. It took me a long time <laughs> to figure out that the trains don't always run. And anyway, I was just, it took me forever to get anywhere back then. Um, but, uh, yeah, I learned, I mean, now I read the signs sometimes, <laughs> most, sometimes. Of the time. most of the time. Oh my goodness. Wow. But, so, you know, 2003, 2005, I, w- I came in 2000. Yeah. It's been a long time. Yeah. Yeah. What? Like, uh, 18 years. Yeah. I'm, it'll be 18 for me. Amazing. Wow. I'm basically, I've been in the United States longer than I was in Canada at this point. I left Canada when I was about to turn 19 and I came here and I've been here I guess that means for 22 years wow Mm -hmm. whoa yeah it's insane when we first moved here we moved up um to 200th and Broadway Mm. we were like near where you are now basically Mm -hmm. yeah and it was such a different experience than living in Boston first of all I lived in Boston in the dorms which is, you know, you might as well be at summer camp. It's <laughs> the entire time I was there. And then I moved in with Oded, but he was in the suburbs a little bit and it was very quiet and chill and it was all friends living on like one whole floor of this building. And then when we moved up there, people would put their stereos facing out. Amazing. Like different music yeah. facing out, <laughs> like all hours. There was just dog shit everywhere. Everywhere. No one cleaned up. So it was like Paris. It, but louder. <laughs> I feel like it was louder. It was so disgusting. Every time I see dog shit, I think about, oh my God, I'm so happy I don't live up there anymore. Wow. Because it was just like, I think I stepped in dog shit every other day. Oh, that sucks. Because you couldn't... That definitely is a metaphor for my first six months in New York City. Right. I didn't literally, but I definitely, there were so many errors, errors in judgment, errors yeah. in finances yeah many many errors <laughs> and thinking about this has helped us dig a deeper hole <laughs> <laughs> in our winter blues yes um, but it, it, you make me think that april might be the thing to look out for so right. i want to be prepared and you've given me some ideas i mean i'm gonna also not speed through all the comedians and cars getting coffee i'm gonna save some yeah for april because i might need some yeah you might yeah also for all that we've sort of cried the blues about New York City in this this episode. I will say in recent weeks I've I've made a concerted effort to get out and do New York things because it's very easy to f- forget yeah. what an amazing place we live in because it's such a battle to always to just kind of keep going. But I went to the Met recently. I saw The Marriage of Figaro and then I went well that that was a Metropolitan Opera Met and then I also just the other day went to the Met and I saw the Michelangelo drawing exhibit which is concluded now um it will be by the time we air (laughs) but um but it was 
it was just a great reminder that actually if you have, you know, a few spare hours or if you decide to make the space on your calendar, I, I felt like a tourist in, in town and it was yeah. really great. Mm-hmm. I mean, like if I went to Paris, I'd go to a museum. Right. Of course you would. And New York City, we know from museums. <laughs> we should go, the three of us, to a museum. I concur. Okay. Yeah. Let's I'm about it. to get the New York City ID card. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I should do that too. You can get good. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Harmony and Hijinks. You can buy Laughing at Life wherever music is sold and through our website, duchesstrio.com. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Duchess Trio. And please subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcatcher. See you next time on Harmony and Hijinks. <laughs>